An integrated contract contains the entire understanding of the parties regarding their agreement. The parole evidence rule bans evidence that's extrinsic to or outside of an integrated written agreement. Oral statements are an example of parole evidence. Under the rule, parole evidence can't be used to contradict an integrated writing. But can parole evidence be used to prove a matter that's not addressed by the writing? In Weiss v. Smalders, the parties have a written agreement that addresses their plan to distribute natural granola. If the plaintiff wants to prove a promise regarding another business matter, can he use parole evidence? Michael Smulders owned a specialty food business. He operated two natural food stores and a bakery under the name Garden of Light. The bakery produced granola for the stores. Smulders wanted to sell the granola wholesale. He arranged with Specialty Food Works, owned by Randall Weiss, to act as the exclusive distributor for the granola. Weiss also owned and operated an olive oil business, so he had experience marketing specialty foods. Smulders and Weiss discussed merging their companies if the granola venture was successful. Garden of Light and Food Works signed a written distribution agreement. The agreement contained recitals, or introductory provisions, that explained the nature and background of the agreement. The recitals reflected that the parties had discussed forming a new company, but noted that a merger would need to be reduced to writing. Following the recitals, the agreement contained substantive provisions which concerned distributing the granola. Finally, there was an integration clause. The clause stated that the document contained the party's full agreement, quote, with reference to the subject matter hereof, unquote. After they signed the agreement, Smulders repeatedly told Weiss that he would merge Garden of Light's bakery business with Weiss's company and that they'd become equal partners in the new entity. Weiss wound down his olive oil company to focus on the granola business. He spent significant time and money on marketing and research. Then Smulders informed Weiss that he no longer wanted to proceed with the merger. Weiss sued Smulders, seeking to recover damages under a promissory estoppel theory. Smulders claimed that the distribution agreement was fully integrated and that the parole evidence rule prohibited the court from considering Smulders' oral representations about the merger. The trial court found in favor of Weiss on the promissory estoppel claim. Smulders appealed to the Connecticut Supreme Court.